Farmers Weekly is here at the John Inners Centre in Norwich to find out what is being done to counter the threat from wheat ear diseases such as Fusarium and Microdochium using genetics from China and Mexico. As growers we've all seen massive effects of these uh, ear diseases coming into our crops and very disappointingly none of the real what we thought were robust crop protection methods have actually managed to stop the ingress of this, these diseases and they've developed into real epidemics. So what is the future and where is the solution for controlling such an important complex of diseases such as this? Um, well the answer probably isn't in an agrochemical can but more likely to be um, in a, an environment such as this at the John Innes Centre where scientists are working in collaboration with other research centres in the UK to try and find solutions to give us as, as farmers to go forward with. We've identified new sources of resistance, particularly to the, the initial infection, this type 1 resistance. We want to identify where those resistances sit within the, the, the um, genome of, of each variety, make crosses, bring markers together for the breeders such that they can have the perfect variety, their variety with whatever yield aspects, quality aspects that are important to them, but bringing in from these other varieties the resistances to Fusarium. And the intention is to pyramid resistances from to type 1 and to type 2 resistance, bring those together two, maybe three genes, such that we have a resistant variety which also has all the characteristics that are required by, by the UK grower. The team here at John Innes Centre have also been investigating how manipulating photoperiod sensitivity, or PPD, can be used to reduce fusarium infection risk by missing summer rains in early June. A normal wheat plant waits for a long day before it starts to flower, whereas these mutant types of PPD um, are hyperactive, if you like, and the plant perceives summer much earlier on in the season, and so you can get something like a week, maybe 10 days early, more um, earlier flowering in a field situation than you would with a wild type plant. And David and I, as well as cloning these genes and starting to understand how they work, were able to produce perfect markers for them. In other words, molecular markers which are in the gene, which will allow breeders to introgress these particular copies of the gene uh, with no associated chromosomal drag of, of unwanted uh, traits. So the reason why you might want slightly earlier flowering is if you have a situation like in the last summer where you have very adverse weather conditions which could cause your crop a problem, be it fusarium or pre-harvest sprouting or, or, or any of the other issues. If you have um, an earlier flowering variety planted in some of your acreage and you manage to escape some of that uh, difficult time by having it um, harvested earlier than the remainder of the crop, then that's kind of an insurance policy for the grower. However, the early flowering varieties don't yield quite as well as the later flowering ones, so that is the balance that has to be struck.